Mickey Robinson was hooked on skydiving. He enjoyed the sensation of floating and flying like a bird far above the earth. All this came to an end one day as the airplane he rode in crashed and then exploded on fire. His death's door experience and his revelatory visit to heaven changed his life forever. August 15, 68, you're going for your wonderful flying and uh, you're in the airplane and when did you first realize something was wrong? The airplane did the pre-flight checkup, we took off, we were going you know, probably 100 miles an hour, maybe 100, 150 feet in the air, and the first thing I remember is the pilot yelled and slapped me on the side and said, that's it, we're going down, we lost our engine. Yeah. This plane was a new plane for him and he thought it was like a rocket, so he really rotated with a steep angle of climb when we lost the engine. We completely quit flying, so it just drops, the aerodynamic stall, it drops straight down like a dropping a tell me, Tell me what happened at the crash. Well, we impacted a giant oak tree, and I was flown, flung forward, you know, my body was going as fast as the plane was, and then suddenly it wasn't. But my face stopped my body going 100 miles an hour, so I was, had a severe head, head injury, my face was torn open from here up to here. The airplane cartwheeled on its wings, slammed in the ground, and the crash was devastating. When you were in the hospital, what was wrong with you? Uh, several uh, progressive complications, a massive weight loss as a result of the burns and just the conditions I was in. Went from 170 pounds, perfect athlete, professional athlete, to 90 pounds. Right, but what, what were the burns? Uh, what percentage of your uh, body? Third, what third type? Degree, almost down to the bone. Brain injury, I was blind in my right eye. My nervous system in my legs, my, the nerves died in the front part of my legs were, uh, both legs were nerve damaged and I had bilateral foot drop, they were withered like bird claws. I mean, as mu they did everything they knew how to do, every kind of treatment. I was so, so infected. So what did these top doctors say? Well, the doctors at the hospital I was at did everything. They were going to amputate this arm because this hand was so badly infected, but after they had tried everything, they brought in a specialist from one of the leading educational You hospitals. also, the reason you went down to 90 pounds is your digestive system was... A combination of things. The type down. of burns that I had in, in the evaporation process alone, it burns 40 calories a day, and I'm not, taking, I'm not able to take any in. So it was just, it was a trim, it just tremendous. I don't have to be a doctor to say you didn't stand much of a no, chance. No, they didn't think from the beginning I had a chance, but they tried as hard as they could. And they finally, when they exhausted all of their things, they brought in a specialist. And at the end of his summary, he says, there's nothing that can be done for this young man. And from that point on, they just let me alone. We're going to try and give me as much legal morphine as they could and just let nature take its course let me die. As I laid there, shaking in that horrible condition in such pain, and I remember it, I was wide awake. I can remember as if it happened this morning. My spirit, my inner man, you see, Sid, we all, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. You are, you really are a spirit, you're an eternal spirit. I, you know, I'm busy on the earth. My, most the, people are just worried about their emotional side. They're worried about what they're going to do today and next yeah, week. Yeah, know, but, yeah. And, and they're missing the whole purpose of life. Well, there's a wholeness of life, you know, and there's, there's these years, which are important, but there's, something else that's called eternity that I was about to get a view of. Okay, did I, you actually die? I, I, my, my spirit sat up in my body and my spirit was ejected from my body and I went into a realm that it, I understand now to be the second heaven and instantly I knew. See, time was gone and I was aware of eternity and it's the most profound thing in the world. We, as long as you and I are walking around here, we're always conscious, tick, 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 tick of time. We get up in the morning, you go to bed at night, uh, we're conscious on the physical plane. Everything is related to time, but everything in the spirit is related to eternity. The colors in the spirit world are more colorful. Everything's sharper. The emotions, everything, and you don't like logic and reason. That doesn't happen. You just know that you know. It's like having truth automatically all the time. And I was being drawn. There was a white light out in the distance. And I, I was being drawn in that light. And I, I could feel this desire to go. And as I was approaching that, I could feel something on my right side. And I looked. And literally, I saw this, I could see and feel and taste the nature of this thing that was closing, and it was black. It was blacker than black, and it was a bottomless pit without a bottom. And it was closing, and the more it closed in front of me, the more I felt the nature of it. It's the separation of all life. There's no experience, there's, there's no matter, there's no chance of, of changing anything. No reversal. No reversal. It's irreversible, eternal separation. It's more horrible and terrifying and hopeless than I can describe in any human terms. It was closing. It began to eclipse that white light. And, 
like from the time, like I said, I'm busy on the earth trying to get it on, be Mr. Cool, be the athlete. I was a, worked in a stock brokerage firm and the day I graduated from high school. I could do a lot of things because of my God-given talents, my looks and my abilities and all that. I'm a skydiver. I don't know how to pray. I just said, please, I'm sorry. I want to live, give me another chance. And now I'm standing on the very edge of eternity, feeling this blackness swallowing me. Knowing that if it swallow, if that closes, if, if I am sealed, I'm gone for eternity. And I screamed in my spirit, God, I'm sorry, I want to live, give me no chance. And instantly, I was standing in the, th in the presence in the throne room of Almighty God. Instantaneously, I knew I would never die for eternity. Simultaneously with that, I was bathed and baptized in the, in the undiluted love of God the Father. Now, I can't say that in words that do it justice. I know, but I want to understand what you're, t what you're okay. saying. In I mean, words, this kind I of... felt God's love not based on my merits. I felt God's purest, most concentrated form of love. If you can imagine, if you had the ability to see radiation, you know it's invisible, but if you could see the invisible with your visible eyes, I could see this golden light, and it was flowing like a river from my left to my right, and I was standing, and there was golden flecks in it, and it was moving. And somehow I knew and could feel that this river is alive. And it was in front of me, behind me, it was underneath me. It was going right through my spirit man. And I was more alive than any comprehension that any person can have of being alive. Funny thing is when I came back, it was so bizarre because my, my spirit, I could feel myself literally traveling from the third heaven through the second heaven through the earth's atmosphere and feel my spirit press into my body. Hmm. And I could hear out of these ears and see the ceiling out of the eye that wasn't blind. And I was surrounded by about a half a dozen doctors and nurses and they were staring at me. And I had all of a sudden I had the ability to be able to read their heart. And they were scared to death. And I felt bad for them as I was so full. Rather than being freaked out or scared or angry, I was now filled with something I'd never experienced before. I was so full of peace. See, if I could put this in a bottle, I'd be the wealthiest drug dealer in the world. You talked about the thrill of skydiving. Yeah. How does that compare to this rarefied air and this love of God you experienced? There's no comparison. This, is, this realm is other than. One of the descriptions of the word holy means other than. It is so, this is more alive than being, more ecstatic than any type that your imagination can even stretch to. God wants to have us have communion with him where his love is really the thing that turns us on. And I was so full, I was overflowing with the love of God, faith, joy. They're all thinking this guy, is, and they were scared because it, you know, I had died, came back, and I give, I'm talking in this word <laughs> language. And these poor guys are thinking, what's gonna, how are we going to explain this? And they says, if he does that again, I'm going to get the blank out of here, you know. And oh, okay, listen, you can't walk, you can't see, you mm -hmm. can't think, you have can't no eat, you have no future. You must have been started to get very depressed. No, it was the opposite. I couldn't wait to live and get out and fulfill these promises that I had received. The power of God, see that river that I saw in heaven, mm -hmm. that river is now inside me. The love of God that I felt was now inside me. And that began to overcome death and the destruction that had happened in my body. Over a period of time, God healed my leg. The other leg had a leg brace on it. I just would talk to my legs. I said, legs moved. This leg worked, this one didn't work. And then one day I was instantly healed. Uh, but what about your eye? You're blind. I was blind for five and a half years. And um, God restored my sight, and the doctors have no, no explanation. And, and he's, they just it's unexplainable. It's in a medical journal. They have no explanation. It's a miracle. It's, you're, you are, even now, gradually, everything that was destroyed is coming back to life. Do you believe it's that river you're talking about? It's the river of life. And, see, and it's talked about in the Bible from the very beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. And at the end of the Bible, it talks about when the river goes out from the temple and touches things. Everything that it touches comes to life. I believe that there are hurting people right now that whether they're hurts, a lot of times when people hear my story and no matter what scene, it could be in a, in a, um, a, a business thing or I've been on other media, I've been in schools, I've been in businesses, I've been in colleges and, and they would say invariably all my scars are on the inside. There's a lot of hurts, a lot of hurting people and the one thing is God sent me back to be a messenger of hope that in Him there's more than hope. There's hope in this life and in the life, the eternal life that's to come. And it's not just in the eternal life, there's hope in this life. All of you that are hearing this, you heard a, a broken man who had, there's no reason while well, I'm sitting here today, 38 years later, twice as long alive as I would have been dead, except for the real God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only true God. There's only one God, there's lots of spirits, but there's only one true God. If it wasn't for God, 
I'm a dead man, I'm not here. But he sent me back to be a voice of life, a voice of hope, that in every situation there is the extreme love of God and intervention he wants to intervene in your life. Whatever your problem is right now, or whatever problem you don't think you have, if you don't know God, believe me, you need to know the living God. He created you for a purpose, and it's not just to hang around this earth. It's brief, whether it's 19 years, it'd be 19 years, I'm 57 now, whether I live to be 100 or not, it's like that compared to eternity. But what you do now, you can choose to know and love God.